All right, we are out at Mark's shop today. And a uh, funny thing happened. I went on vacation to Hawaii for a week. And Mark just decided to start building another project, and he's well underway. So let's take a look and see what he's got going here. This is what he has got. Anybody recognize it? Go ahead, just start shouting it out. No, I, I guess I can't hear you anyways. But uh, anyways, this one is Chuck Cunningham's Fly Baby. And if any of you, like when I start the beginning of, the, um, of my videos, there's a shot where I'm shooting the ceiling of the Seattle uh, Museum of Flight. And there's one up there. And I've actually had a couple of viewers ask questions about what that was. And it is a, it's a fly baby. And that's what this one is right here. And Mark has been uh, working on this for how many weeks now? When did you go to Hawaii? Uh, like three weeks ago. Not a week before you left. I'm sorry, go more than a month. Yeah. So anyways, you can see that this is a... It's, it's not an easy plan to work off of. There's lots of, like if you were to compare this to that Rebel that I put together, there's lots of other things in it. I mean, like, look right here. Each one of these is a gusset. That's another uh, way to support the, um, the rib up against the trailing edge. And, I mean, that's, that's a lot more, there's a lot of work in this one here. And so, but uh, Chuck Cunningham was a, he was a, author in uh, RCM magazine that's radio control modeler that was around for many many years and uh, he was a very well known and very well respected modeler uh, he passed away I I can't remember how long it's been now I think it's only I think it's been maybe 10 years but uh, anyways that's what he's working on right now let's get a look underneath here oh you see that that is a DLE 20 cc engine and lots of air to breathe down there so it should be well ventilated and the hard part we've been working on today has been this right here all of the assembly of this uh, set of gear so he's Mark's been welding on those getting them all stuck together with solder and uh, yeah so anyways that's what Mark does in his spare time he gets another five minutes he'll probably throw another one together yeah. You guys remember Lucy, right? Lucy still loves me, right? She's not really growling, she's just hungry. That's her stomach. Hey, welcome back to the shop. It's really good to see you here again. Hey, welcome back to my shop. And uh, today I got another project out here. You see, Mark went and started his own project. We were gonna do this uh, beavers, uh, the Haviland beaver build together, but I went out of town on vacation for a week. And like I said, he started his own new project, which he'll have done here shortly. But I thought, uh, you know what, as long as he's doing that, I will get one of my projects out that I've been looking at and wanting to work on. And it's this. Yeah, isn't she beautiful? Yeah, it's my space walker too. I built this 20 years ago. Can you believe that? 20 years ago. And I think it has been at least 18, 19 since I have flown it. Uh, I flew it for a few years, probably got about 20 flights on it. And then I just kind of started in a different direction and started working on other scale airplanes and uh, the, into this bigger scale. This was my first giant scale airplane. And I know, I know you guys, over in Europe, we're looking at this going, what the heck, how can you consider this to be giant scale? It fits on a table for crying out loud, in your shop, it can't be giant scale. Okay, so I went from kind of English to almost an Irish accent there. But anyways, not to insult anybody, but I know how you guys feel about this, because the stuff that you guys have over in Europe, giant scale means uh, I had to put it all in my car to get it to the field and my car is a uh, panel van or something like that um, But they do some very big scale planes over there. I'm not gonna 
I'm not gonna, you know, disrespect that. I think that is really cool, by the way. But this is considered giant scale because it fit the IMAA standards, which IMAA was International Model Aircraft Association. I think that's what it was. It's now defunct and gone. But back in the day, uh, this was considered a bigger airplane. And that was before things got really, really big and they started putting like snowmobile motors and stuff on them. This one has a chainsaw motor, which was, you know, kind of stepping out there a little bit. It's got a G38 um, gasoline motor in it. And that's what kind of made it special. I wanted to have a giant scale airplane so that I could go to these meets because they have restrictions. They would say, in order to get into their meet, uh, your plane to qualify would have to have an 80 inch wingspan if it was a mono wing or a 60 inch wingspan if it was a biplane. And then, um, the, what was the third rule? Oh, the third rule would, would be that it could be any quarter, true quarter scale airplane. So a lot of the pits type airplanes, those biplanes with the, uh, the very short bodies on them, you know, it doesn't take much to get a quarter scale size out of them because they are really a small airplane to begin with. But anyways, this was my entry and I actually did take it and fly it at an IMAA couple of times uh, down in Central California. They used to have one called the West Coast Festival that was held at Castle Air Force Base. And it was a great place to be because it's just a big old sheet of concrete. You cannot, it, there, there really wasn't a runway because you could take off and land anywhere in this designated area that they designated the runway. It was very wide. So it was great. Um, anyways, good memories and stuff like that. But then after that, I kind of put this one in the shed and um, it has been sitting out there ever since. And I don't know why I quit flying it because I, I really enjoyed flying it. Um, there's no serious dings on it, so I never wrecked it or anything like that. Uh, I don't know, I just put it away and, and continued on and I moved on to building uh, bigger scale warbirds and stuff like that. And I really enjoy that too. But I figured I'll get this one out, I'll clean it up. Um, cleaning is, yeah. Right now, it looks like if you handle it too much, you could get tetanus. So, uh, got to fix that. But it's going to need to be gone through because there's a lot of things that have changed since I built it. Uh, one of them is it's got a 72 megahertz radio in there. I'm not going to use that one anymore. I'll be dropping one of my 2.4 um, megahertz or 2.4 gigahertz radios uh, for the uh, uh, Tandem 18. I'm at a loss for words today. For the Tandem 18, I'll be going ahead and, and resetting all the controls and everything like that. I wanna work on the wing joiners that I made. I created this. This plane originally had an 80 inch wingspan. It was supposed to be a one-piecer and I made it a two, uh, three-piecer actually so that I could keep it on its gear and just tie it to the bottom of the trailer on the way to the field and then insert the wings. I do not like the joint that I've made on it. Um, let me show you here real quick. Ugh. Okay, so look how clean the wing halves are, huh? They were wrapped in a blanket. The plane wasn't. Okay, so I don't know if you could see that. I've got two joiners. This one here, on this side here, this is the aluminum one. This is an aluminum joiner that SIG actually uses on their third scale uh, spacewalker. And so I put one of these in there and then I put this stupid brass tube with a hole in it so that I could run a screw up through that to lock the second part of it. This is really unnecessary. This particular joiner here is the, the aluminum one is plenty strong for this. So I really, the thing that's hard is when I go to insert this, sometimes it hangs up and you gotta widgy the wing back and forth to get it all in place. It's just a pain in the butt. I'm gonna shorten this up. I'll just cut it off and this will just be a simple guide that'll be in the back of the wing. Uh, won't really serve much of a purpose as far as that goes for holding it, but this is sufficient. It will be fine just with that. So let's see what else needs to be done on it. Of course, I got to get the radio out of it. I'm not wild about this pilot. This is a G load guy and somebody made this for me and I went ahead and put it in here. I don't know. I kind of wish I could find a quarter scale, serious looking pilot, you know, just do with a headset or something. I don't want a military one, but I'll look around and see if I can find one of those. And then, you know, there's just general cleanup on there. Uh, it just needs to be cleaned over. I've also found something that's weird is this hole that's on the side here used to have 
wiring coming out of it that goes into the aileron servos in the wing. It's missing. I don't know where it is. It's not sticking out. It's almost like I, I might have cannibalized this plane to get that harness out of there for some other use, but I don't remember doing that. So we'll go through it. Uh, of course, I'll go through the engine, make sure that that runs well. Uh, probably going to have to rebuild the carburetor on it. The diaphragm in it is probably a pretty crispy booger. But um, anyways, we'll start working on this, get this plane cleaned up, and see if we can get it out to the field here. Right now, the current weather has been awful. We've got lots of snow and ice and lots of moisture. So I'm pretty sure that the field is probably pretty muddy. I'm not going to be going out to it for a while. So this will give me enough time to get all this stuff going and then uh, hopefully have a net, another airplane to fly out there. So as I'm tearing it apart, I'll kind of show you what I'm doing to update it and make sure everything is okay. Uh, I have concerns about the servos. They've been sitting for 20 years. Don't know what condition they're anymore. So we'll go through all those too. It's going to be a fun project, but you know, brings back good memories. And I want to really, I really want to get this plane back up in the air again. I think it'll be fun. So that's about it. Let's get started. <laughs> 